keep going westward in Europe without leaving the continent, and eventually you'll stumble across a capital sitting at the edge of the Atlantic Ocean. One of the oldest European cities, it is full of history, color, life, and delicious treats. Although only recently added to our map here at J-Way Travel, it's already a guest favorite. Welcome to Lisbon! In today's video, we're counting down the top things to see and do in the Portuguese capital. So, without further ado, let's get started. And we'll start with some useful general information. Lisbon is home to some iconic panoramas, and we'll even cover our favorite viewpoints later in this video. That, however, also means that Lisbon is very uneven and will have you going up and down a lot. While this feature of the city should not be understated, there are various tools to help you navigate Lisbon without climbing too many stairs. First of all, you have Lisbon's famous tram lines. If you've ever seen a picture of Lisbon, it was most likely a yellow historical tram climbing the city's various slopes. The most famous among tourists is tram number 28, crossing many important landmarks such as the grandiose Lisbon Cathedral. If you want to ride the 28, we'd recommend rising early in the morning as the tram tends to get quite crowded during the day. Apart from trams, several funiculars and elevators operate in the city. The most famous is the Santa Justa lift, a neo-gothic elevator from the turn of the 20th century connecting the neighborhood of Baixa with the higher Carmo Square, allowing people easy access to monuments such as the beautiful Carmo convent ruins and their treasure-filled museum. Let's also briefly touch on Lisbon's various neighborhoods. In the very center, you'll find the lively Baixa. Characterized by wide avenues with many stores and restaurants, Baixa is home to the iconic Praça do Comercio and its large triumphal arch, as well as the Santa Justa lift we mentioned mere minutes ago. Neighboring Baixa to the west are the bohemian districts of Chiado and Baixa Alto. Chiado is elegant, famous for culture and architecture, while Bairro Alto is alternative and renowned for its nightlife. On the eastern side of Baixa is the popular Alfama neighborhood, an old fishing district sitting on the hill below the St. George Castle. Last but not least is the neighborhood of Belém, located a bit further from the city center but absolutely worth the journey for the iconic Tower of Belém and Jerónimos Monastery. Both are tied to the so-called Golden Age of Maritime Exploration of the 15th and 16th centuries. The Geronimus Monastery is where monks would pray for the king and offer spiritual assistance to seafarers. The Belém Tower, on the other hand, was both a defense tower and a symbol of Portugal's maritime power and stands today as one of the most visited monuments in the country. Once again, we recommend an early morning visit to avoid the crowds. And while the visit of the tower is definitely a good idea while in Lisbon, oddly enough it doesn't offer many great views. But you don't have to walk far to fix that problem. Which finally brings us to our next point. Take the time and enjoy some of Lisbon's beautiful viewpoints. Just a short walk from the Belém Tower is the Monument to the Discoveries allowing you to ascend 170 feet high and admire great views of the Belém Tower, Jerónimos Monastery and the unmissable 25th of April Bridge. The center of Lisbon is also full of great views and viewpoints. Visit one of the romantic terraces or miradoros like the Portas do Sol viewpoint. Picture-perfect views can be seen all around this large balcony and the kiosk calls for a coffee break or visit the dreamy Miradoro de Santa Lucia, relax, take a plethora of photos and admire the red rooftops and a unique view of the National Pantheon. Funnily enough, the Pantheon is actually our next entry on the best views list. A tomb for some of the most important Portuguese personalities and a building worth visiting in and of itself, it offers wonderful 360 degree views from its roof terrace. Enjoy yet another perspective on the Alfama neighborhood and Tagus River. Lastly, 
we would be remiss not to mention one of the most impressive views of Lisbon and the place to be for sunset watching, the castle of St. George. This hilltop has been occupied by humans as early as the 8th century BC and offers another wonderful opportunity to combine sightseeing with breathtaking panoramic views. Explore the fortress, walk along the castle walls and take approximately 7,000 pictures of the surroundings as you tour this great site. And now, it's time to move on to yet another defining aspect of Lisbon, its culinary riches. You've most likely heard of the typical pastel de nata, a sweet egg custard tart usually enjoyed with some cinnamon and a cup of coffee. This delightful dessert actually originates from Lisbon and you can still sample the original pastel de Belém in a bakery near the Jeronimos Monastery, where it was first introduced. We all love some good fresh seafood and Portugal definitely has a lot of that. The delightful grilled sardines, delicate octopus dishes like polvo a la garer or hearty arroz de marisco, seafood rice reminiscent of Spanish paella. Confusingly though, the most popular fish in Portugal is the cod, a species of fish found in seas far to the north of Portugal. How is that possible? Without delving too deeply into detail, dried cod has been an important international commodity since the Viking times. It is the perfect fish for drying or preserving in salt and therefore ideal for keeping aboard ships for long periods of time or keeping in your home as a durable source of protein. Portugal developed a taste for dried salted cod or bacalhau in the Middle Ages and at the turn of the 15th century, as the Portuguese became an important maritime power, pioneered cod fishing in the distant waters of Newfoundland. Today, there are numerous ways to prepare bacalhau, like the delicious pastéis de bacalhau, tasty cod fritters, or the traditional bacalhau com natas, a dish made with salted cod and potatoes. A great lunch on the go is a hearty meat sandwich like the classic bifana or prego. Another sandwich, though it visually may not seem like one at first glance, is francesinha, a meat sandwich doused in rich tomato sauce, typically served with an egg and french fries. Let's also briefly touch on drinks. Portugal is a great destination for wine lovers and even has its own special twist available, the Vinho Verde, a young fresh wine consumed not long after bottling. Another alcoholic drink worth trying out is Jijinha, a sour cherry liquor great when served neat in a shot glass or a wonderful addition to many cocktails. And of course, coffee is a big part of Portuguese culture. The easiest way to taste what Lisbon has to offer in places where locals would enjoy their meals is to join a food tour. When you take a trip designed by J-Way Travel, we'll make sure to put you on the best food tour in the city. You will have a knowledgeable local guide explain the ties of food and history, like why Lisbon might be a great place to try Mozambican cuisine, and take you on a culinary journey through time and space. More information on why and how to travel with us at the end of the video, and now back to our list. If you don't mind a rather modern setting that allows you to taste multiple of these dishes at the same time, we recommend popping by the Time Out Market, a large market hall filled with a curated selection of food stalls, small restaurants, and artisan kiosks. It was opened in 2014 by the British media company of the same name, and quickly became one of the places to be in Lisbon, delivering great and modern vibes. Which is a neat way to bring us to our next point. Let's talk about cool and hip things to do in Lisbon. Discover the cool side of Lisbon at the LX Factory. While you will definitely find hip shops and establishments all over the city, nowhere are they as concentrated as in the LX Factory, a former industrial area located basically right below the 25th of April Bridge. It is full of small artisan shops, quirky bars and eateries, and a true mecca for creative individuals. Because while exploring the Lisbon of yore is a wonderful experience, it is just as fascinating to peek into the Lisbon of today. 
and we highly recommend taking the time to see the LX factory for that. Picking out some souvenirs, supporting local artists, and enjoying a lovely caipirinha or two. The complex also hosts regular events and flea markets. Speaking of flea markets, pop by the Mercado de Santa Clara to check out various treasures and knickknacks, or grab a snack, like some of the previously mentioned Portuguese sandwiches, here available with meat alternatives. And overall, just get lost in Lisbon's streets and you'll be bound to stumble upon a plethora of cool stores and establishments. Now, let's move on to our next point. Get to know the musical style of Fado. Fado traces its roots back to the Lisbon of the early 19th century, to the bohemian districts and the working class people of the city. Sailors, traders, fishwives, prostitutes and others singing mournfully about their life and the sea, expressing saudade, the Portuguese word describing the emotional state of longing for something or someone absent. Fado songs are usually performed by a solo singer accompanied by the pear-shaped guitarra and you can visit performances in quaint Fado bars and eateries all over the city, especially in the districts of Alfama and Bairro Alto. Fado is so essentially Portuguese that it earned its place on the UNESCO list of intangible cultural heritage and you can find Fado-inspired monuments and artwork all over Lisbon. We also highly recommend visiting the Fado Museum in Alfama, which does an excellent job explaining the history and culture of this unique musical style. And now that we've covered the unique artistic expressions of the musical variety, let's jump into another characteristic craft that is most synonymous with Portugal itself. Admire the beauty and learn more about the Portuguese tiles. You don't have to be in Lisbon for more than a few minutes before stumbling upon a building covered in dazzlingly colorful tiles called azulejos. Their various shapes and palettes speak to the long history of this decorative art form. They were brought to Europe by the Moors and later adopted by the Portuguese when a 15th century king fell in love with them after visiting Sevilla. Azulejos have gone through their own evolution and many signature styles. The blue and white painting-like tiles from the 17th century stand out in places like the São Vicente de Fora Monastery, one of the prominent buildings of the Lisbon skyline. Its interiors hide one of the largest collections of Baroque azulejo tiles under one roof and are certainly worth your time while visiting the city. To learn even more about this ubiquitous Portuguese art form, visit the remarkable Azulejo Museum taking you on a journey through the history of the tile from the 15th century till the present day. And, of course, just keep your eyes open and you'll be able to see stunning art on every other street corner. Art that makes Lisbon so vibrant and full of color. Our next point briefly covers a unique attraction perfect for anyone traveling with kids or looking for a break from traditional sightseeing. Admire sea life at the Lisbon Ocean area. Before you even enter, you'll be impressed by the exhibition grounds of the 1998 World Fair and the intricate architecture of the building itself. Inside, you will be immersed in the world of the deep sea. Numerous marine species call the oceanarium its home. Sharks, rays, sunfish, corals, seahorses, various fish, but also birds, penguins, puffins, sea otters, and much more. A perfect place to visit with children, but just as fascinating for adults, the Oceanarium can be a wonderful way to spend a slow day in Lisbon. Now, let's take a brief break from Lisbon to visit one of the most famous nearby attractions. Take a day trip and admire the beautiful palaces of Sintra. To clear up possible confusion, Sintra is not a singular palace, but an entire town and municipality that once used to be a popular summer destination for Portuguese high society. Its short distance from the Portuguese capital makes the area the perfect day trip destination, with a varied offer of palaces, nature walks and serene atmosphere. The icon of Sintra, and the palace you've most likely seen in photos, is the multicolored 
Benap Palace. Its vibrant exterior and position atop a green hill make it quite iconic and one of the most popular and must-see destinations in Sintra. The palace's richly decorated interiors are also definitely worth your time, just like the views of the lush landscape around. Mind-bogglingly beautiful interiors are also on display at the Montserrat Palace, a villa inspired by the Islamic style of the Iberian Moors, surrounded by opulent green gardens. Don't miss a look at the cork oaks, trees responsible for another of the most quintessential Portuguese products, cork. There are so many more sites to choose from in Sintra and we'll be delighted to help you choose one suited to your preferences on your next J-Way travel trip to Portugal. Enjoy a lovely day trip from Lisbon and see the best Sintra has to offer as well as the westernmost point in Europe and other fascinating sites. We have now talked about Lisbon for over 15 minutes and still barely scratched the surface of what the city has to offer, which demonstrates how difficult it might be to plan the perfect vacation by yourself. It's so easy to feel like you're missing out on something while traveling and the smallest mistakes can lead to big annoyances. Not with Jayway. Get in touch with our travel experts who will help you plan the vacation of a lifetime not to just Lisbon, but the whole of Portugal, or even to neighboring Spain or other European countries. We listen to your needs and interests and plan the perfect trip where every day counts. Enjoy an experience that our clients call seamless and take advantage of a unique service with local representatives on the ground, available to you for help, giving you a feeling of safety while allowing you to keep your independence. Head over to jwaytravel.com slash Portugal to check out sample itineraries or to contact us directly. And we will be happy to see you in Portugal. In the meantime, browse the other informative videos about our Jway destinations, like the recently published guide to Barcelona, and subscribe for even more videos like this one. Let us know what destination we should cover next, and we will see you next time.